Ho, ho, ho. I'm Rocco Steno, and welcome to Storymakers. Today, we have a special holiday Storymakers. The story is called Santa.com, and we have the creator of the book with us, Russell Hicks. Welcome, Russell. Hey, Rocco. Happy holidays. Yeah, very good, very good. And thank you, thank you, thank you for giving us the story of Santa.com. And uh, so tell us about Santa.com. Well, Santa.com is a story that my writing partner, Matt Coverly, and I wanted to tell that is a new story for the kids of today. You know, Matt and I were talking that you know, we had so many characters for the holidays that we grew up with, uh, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and, and Frosty the Snowman and such, that we want to bring a new story for this audience, this, this generation of kids, for their holidays. Um, so we created Santa.com. Um, and Santa.com is about a young elf named Yo-Yo who is starting his first day at, at the North Pole in Santa's uh, toy factory. Um, and all his life, he's heard all these wonderful stories from his grandfather about what it was like to work for Santa. On his first day, he finds out it's completely modernized. He's basically a Packer elf. As the toys come down the assembly line, he just puts them in the boxes and packs them up and gets them ready to be delivered for Christmas. And then one day, as he's working, the whole operation is shut down because it's been hacked by Cyber Scrooge. Wait, 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 wait. The operation gets shut down because it's hacked by someone named what? By Cyber Scrooge. Cyber Scrooge. And the whole place goes into a panic because it's seven days till Christmas and they'll never fulfill all of the, the, the um, operation that they need to to get ready. So in their panic, Yo-Yo steps forward and says, I know how to pull Christmas together. My grandfather told me all these stories and all we need to do is we need to find all the old uh, old people who used to work here, all the elves and the, the reindeer and the sleigh. And then most of all, we have to find Santa um, wherever he is. So they set off um, on an adventure to find all these old, all the old characters and bring them back to save Christmas. Well, let me get this. So they have to find the reindeer who have since retired. They have to find Santa who's off on a, a trip somewhere. And they have to find Santa's sleigh. Well, that seems like a big a job to me. But I'll let you read the story to find out what happens and if Yo-Yo is able to pull Christmas together. Yes. Okay, it is Christmas and miracles do happen around Christmas. So, Russell, do you have any memories from Christmas growing up? At our house, Christmas started at Thanksgiving. Um, after the Thanksgiving meal, my mom would pull out all the boxes of Christmas decorations and we would start working on getting the house ready for the holidays, um, putting lights around the everything, pulling up all the ornaments and organizing it. And then we'd go out to the Christmas tree farm that was by our home and we would find the perfect Christmas tree. It had to be the perfect Christmas tree, the perfectly shaped tree. We'd spend an hours looking for the tree. And once it was found, my mom who lived, what, lived in the snow when she was a young girl, wanted to always have snow. And we lived in Southern California, which as everyone knows, we never have snow. Um, so she would have it lightly flocked so it looked like there had been a snowfall on the tree. So I always have this wonderful memory of a Christmas tree with light, like fake snow on it. And then we would put all the ornaments on there all that my mom had collected over the years and the lights and we would, and it was just a wonderful time of the year as everybody knows where the family gets together and shares um, such a joy. Is there a favorite illustration from the book that you'd like to share with us? The book was beautifully illustrated by Riley Garcia and he um, really did an amazing job. But my favorite spread that he created was the one where Santa's um, on his vacation and you see his Airstream trailer at the beach and way out in the distance, Santa's parasailing um, when Yo-Yo comes to, to find him. Um, and I just love the illustration of, of Santa parasailing because 
you know, he, he flies around the world on one night, but then on his vacation, he still wants to be flying around out over the ocean. So it's really a fun illustration. Right, you know, uh, so uh, it seems that Santa and Mrs. Claus uh, are on some sort of road trip, I guess, and, and enjoying uh, the different communities that he tends to uh, fly over in the past. Yeah, uh, so, well, Santa only has 24 hours to deliver all the gifts around the world, so he doesn't really get time to actually visit any communities that he's flying by. So it's really nice to have Santa being able to take his time off to visit all of these places that he's only seen from the air um, and spend time relaxing and enjoying the people that um, he delivers gifts to every year. Did you like to draw when you were a kid? I drew all the time as a child. I was constantly doodling and I was known for all the doodles that I did in school. In fact, all my note taking, I would do doodles. Like in history class, I would doodle George Washington. If we're learning about George Washington, I'd doodle George Washington with speech bubbles coming out of his mouth of him not telling a lie or cutting down the cherry tree. Um, and I kept getting a lot of encouragement from my teachers to keep drawing. Um, they enjoyed all of the, the funny little notes that I would put it alongside on my papers. So um, I got a lot of encouragement. So when I got older, I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. Um, my parents didn't think, and author, my parents didn't think that was really a great career. So um, I chose animation because I loved cartoons. I loved animated films, especially all the Disney old animated films. And so I wanted to be an animator and I, and I went to school, to learned how to be an animator and got a job in the industry. Um, after that, I was hired to work on Teddy Ruxpin, the talking teddy bear, um, because they needed an illustrator to design all the characters and create the books that went alongside the, the toy. So I uh, worked for Teddy Ruxpin for a while and then was, uh, got hired by the Walt Disney Company, worked for Disney, and the rest is history. So, you know, I want to ask the uh, boys and girls who are watching this uh, show to think about Santa visiting you, not on Christmas. He just happens to be on this road trip across the country, and he ends up in your community. And you know what? You could tell who he is. He's the guy with the white beard. He's a little, you know, has a few extra pounds on him. Uh, he doesn't tend to wear his... Uh, red Santa suit all the time. So you never know. If you happen to see uh, a guy with a big white beard, you may ask if he's Santa. But think about if it was Santa, where would you take him in your community? What would you show him? Is there a historic spot you want to show him or your favorite place to visit? You know what he probably would like? He would like to know the best ice cream store in your town. Well, Santa.com is a great way to celebrate the holidays because it talks about the world today, but it also reminds us of some of the traditions from years ago. So it's a great way for families to share the holidays. So Russell, Thank you so much for being with us, and you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. And thank you. Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And remember, until next time, read a book in any format. <laughs>